Hola, beloveds. It's your girl, Clementine from Big Empress Energy, sending you them beautiful, bountiful blessings, honey. Be open to receiving them. Mm, 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 mis amores. Can you smell it? Can you smell it in the air, you guys? Taurus season is just a few days away, okay? We are about to leave eclipse season, eclipse grade, the ghetto, and lean into our fixed earth, the stability of Taurus season coming through with the magic and the potency. It starts on Venus Day, Friday, April 19th. I'll be doing an abundance burn that day, okay? Because it's also when Jupiter and Uranus are coming together for their conjunction in Taurus. So it's giving abundance. It's giving blessings. The actual conjunction is exact on uh, April 20th. Okay. 420. That's when we have our beloved Reiki school level one and two is on the 21st. So if you're interested in that, it's going, it's not going to be a Reiki, but it is going to be a magical candle altar, setting our intention, sending your specific petitions. I'll be reading them out loud as well. Burning the candle, sending you guys messages that come through and images and pictures of our abundance burn. So if you're interested in that, definitely secure spot on my site, big empress energy, LLC.com. We also are here today to talk about the full moon in Scorpio, which is six days away. It's on April 23rd. Okay. And this full moon is going to be our full moon first one after eclipse season, and it's going to be very powerful and magnetic. So we're going to get into what this means for the collective as well as all signs horoscopes. Okay. So this is our all signs horoscopes video. I'm streaming on YouTube and Instagram. Let me know where you're watching from, how you're doing today. Okay. This live will definitely be saved as well. Okay. And so for that, uh, uh, lunar, Full moon, okay, yo, eclipse season, Mercury retrograde got my tongue. By the way, Mercury retrograde ends a few couple days after the full moon, okay? I believe it is April 25th, so that's very exciting, but we will still be in the post-shadow period until like May 13th. I tweeted about it, so definitely make sure that you see that. What else? So that full moon, we are having our Reiki, okay? It's going to be our sensual healing attunement Reiki, tapping into the sensuality of Taurus season, which which rules over our senses, our possessions, our body, uh, luxury, okay, food, jewelry, all things beautiful, all things Venus, okay, and with it being the full moon in Scorpio, which is traditionally ruled by Mars, we have this Mars-Venus sensual intimacy happening, we're going to be healing our trauma around intimacy as well. Okay. Around feeling comfortable in our body, regulating our nervous system. Okay. We're also going to be tapping in with our sacral chakra, our third eye. So that distance Reiki session includes just that distance Reiki energy healing, which is a Japanese modality, healing modality that promotes stress reduction, peace, relaxation, and balancing out our chakras, clearing out things that we no longer need. That's a big one. Okay. We're also going to be going on a private live with our sound bath, group reading, on-screen energy healing, and a rake report, a message for each chakra the next day. Okay. So definitely secure your spot for this. This full moon in Scorpio is going to be hyper emotional. Okay. I do feel like we're going to be getting a lot of things coming to the surface, a lot of post eclipse clarity coming through with this Taurus season. Okay. And this full moon in Scorpio. So let's get into the collective, what the collective needs to know for this. Okay. Let's see. So the full moon is um, exact at 7.48 PM Eastern time. Okay. So adjusted to your time zone, but it generally will be filling that all day. It is going to be at four degrees. Okay. So when we're thinking about like degree theory. Okay. When we're thinking about degree theory, four degrees representing a Cancerian energy. Okay. So this is bringing some sort of like nurturing, some sort of foundation that this full moon is trying to lay down for us, especially with it being Cancerian and it's a full moon in Scorpio. This is hyper sensitizing our like third eye. So that's why I feel like we're going to get a lot of nudges from spirit, a lot of downloads from spirit. Okay. And this can even be around ways that you're needing to nurture yourself and be real and keep it cute with yourself. When we have this, um, 
full moon, we're also going to be wrapping up Jupiter cycle in Taurus. Okay. And this is going to be in Taurus until May 25th when it switches over to Gemini, which is why everyone was saying, Taurus, you're going to have the best year. All the earth signs are going to be feeling that Jupiter blessings. Now, when Jupiter moves into Gemini, all that is Gemini risings, suns, moons, and um, heavy air placements will all be affected by Jupiter's blessings. So that is a, a Jupiter cycle is wrapping up. Okay. So this full moon is also going to be highlighting that fact. Okay. Last full and new moon for this Jupiter. And so what I'm feeling with this is that this full moon is really expanding. Okay. Our sense of awareness around our resources, around our own stability, as well as the resources and that we share with others. So your partners, your lovers, your friends, your besties, okay. Your family, your children, how you guys add into each other's life. That's going to be high hyper highlighted okay for this full moon in scorpio you know when we're thinking about scorpio energy it gets really deep and it's also very very intense so i feel like this full moon is going to be intense okay it's going to be one of transformation as well because scorpio is also this sign that has to do with death and rebirth when we're thinking about full moons we're releasing when the moon is full it's a culmination okay so it's a lot of energy when the moon is full. Okay. And it's a lot of energy that, um, we may not know like what to deal with. So we're going to need to like move our bodies. We're going to need to pray. We're going to need to meditate and be calm as cool as a cucumber as we can, because even though we're going to be in Taurus season, we are still going to have Mercury, the North Node, Chiron, Venus, all in Aries. Okay. So there's still going to be this underlying of anybody who wants it can get it. Okay, Aries is giving us that nugget you book. We're ready to fight for our rights. We're ready to fight for our values. Okay. <laughs> Around this side, we're gonna be seeing Venus, that planet that is ruling um Taurus, is going to be next to Chiron. So I feel like people's insecurities are gonna come up and be very triggering for them. Insecurities perhaps around the way you look, the way your body moves, the amount of money you have, um, the things that you have, the things that you want, but keep escaping you. So it's like, we're really needing to as well, kind of like get out of our ego and do this like shadow work around our values. What's really important. Health is your, is very important, right? The things that money cannot buy, the things that you provide by your energy, by your aura and who's attracted to it and who sticks around and who deserves your energy and who was using your energy the entire time. Okay. That's another thing coming up here. We're seeing Neptune wrap up. It's very long cycle in Pisces. Neptune's been in Pisces, honey, forever. And it's finally closing down this cycle. So for that new moon, that's on my birthday on May 7th, Pi Neptune will be at 29 degrees right now is going to be with Mars during this full moon. Okay. So we have the planet of action and impulsivity, and we have this planet that has to do with anger and war next to Neptune. So I really want us to stay out the drama, focus on that business that pays you drink your water. Okay. Drink your water, hydrate yourself. Okay. Nourish yourself, cook a good meal, eat at a a good restaurant, order some good takeout. Okay. This full moon's going to be feeding us. Okay. But we do not need to, um, take action on things. Cause I feel like there's going to be a sort of like cloud. Like we're not having all the information at this point. There's also, um, miscommunication happening here too, because Mercury is retrograde. And as well, we have this Neptune. There could be people feeling like they're disappointed in themselves or disappointed in the actions that other people took. So, you know, you're kind of going to be seeing like, who's really about that ish? Like who's really about that ish? Who really stands on their values? Who really knows who they are? Okay. Who's really not afraid to dig deep because Scorpio is also this sign that takes us into the underworld. It goes deep. Okay. It goes beneath the surface. And I feel like if you've been wanting to research about things, you're only going to get half of the story. I think it's so important to diversify. Okay. The sources that you cite at this time because everyone is like a mouthpiece and everyone has their point of view but we have to kind of dig deeper beneath the surface and see what is really going on here 
Mm -hmm. And I feel like as well with this Neptune Mars, we're going to be having very intense dreams leading up to this full moon. So if you're someone who's really into dream work, making sure you have your dream journal, if you're wanting to get into dream work, this is going to be a really good full moon to do that. Okay. Um, another thing here is that you know, around this full moon, there's also going to be a square to Pluto. Now, Pluto is going to be the traditional ruler of Scorpio. Scorpio is ruled by Mars as well as Pluto. So with this full moon squaring the ruler of Scorpio, it's heightening that intensity. It's heightening our ability or our desire to really reach beneath the surface and get down to the nitty gritty of a situation of how you really feel of how someone else feels around you. This could be a great full moon to start therapy or opening up to people who you trust, trusted advisors. Okay. And some other issues that are coming up around here is manipulation. You can be seeing ways that people have manipulated you. And sometimes people manipulate others without like intentionally manipulating you, right? It's like what I'm come with the theory or like the analogy is like there's a breakup, right? And you're like fighting to keep your relationship. And it's like you could be slightly using manipulative tactics to pull on this person's heartstrings to kind of get your way. And you're also not seeing both sides of the situation. So it's like people's ways that they try to manipulate, but not in a way that they're intentionally like, you know what, F this person, I'm going to manipulate them. But they're just so concerned about what it is that they particularly want and their desires that they go and they 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 go towards these roots of intensity okay pulling on your emotions this is a highly triggering full moon with this pluto square now pluto squares are also known to help like put pressure on you so that you become a diamond pluto transits are about transformation mm -hmm. and so it's like this full moon could be also highlighting the things that you need to let go to evolve and ascend into your higher self and as well, maybe values that are shifting, values that you no longer resonate with, especially with this Mercury retrograde, the things that you've been reviewing. Okay. Um, yes. If you are a Scorpio, whatever, sun, moon, rising, you're going to be filling this Pluto square very intensely as well. Okay. Because your natal planets, especially if you're early degree, like two degree, three degree, four degree, five degree, six degree, okay, of uh, Scorpio, you're going to feel the square. Also, this goes the same for Taurus. So if you're an early Taurus birthday and your birthday is like this weekend, your birthday's next week, you're going to be feeling this Pluto transit. The thing about the uh, astrology of our birthday, our solar returns, they follow us. Okay. So whatever is happening on your birthday is going to be the theme for your entire year. Okay. So if you are an early degree Scorpio, um, or Taurus, you're going to be transforming a lot. You're going to be elevating a lot. You're going to feel a lot of intense emotions, power dynamics. You could be taking your power back. I also highly associate that with the full moon in Scorpio, taking your power back because it's like, you know, Scorpio with it being ruled by Pluto, it's about power. It's about, you know, not giving your power and your energy away to situations that are not going to be complimentary to you or just try to take you down, down, down. Okay. Um, do I do solar return readings? I'm going to start doing them. I'm going to start putting them on my site right now. I just have birth chart, transit chart, like next month ahead, next six months, love readings, synastry readings. I'm also offering tarot readings and quick fire, like one question readings. Okay. Um, so yeah, that's going to be the big one. Okay. About this full moon. And we can also say that there's going to be a trickling of some beautiful surprise coming through in Taurus season. Cause if it doesn't happen this weekend, the full moon's really going to release that. How can we work with the energy of a full moon? Okay. So when we have a full moon, we can want to surround ourselves with our loved ones, with people who we vibe with. Okay. We can want to go to a party, be seen. Okay. We can also, you know, just spend time with your loved ones. Full moons, it's going to give you more energy. So it's going to be a harder time for you to go to sleep. This is why people like to do the Reiki too, because it can help to relax you and go to sleep. But Reiki impacts everyone differently. Sometimes people get very hyper. They get an energy boost during the Reiki. Okay. As well. So there's always different size depending on the person. 
the Taurus season workshop is canceled. Okay. So if you had signed up, you received an email that it was canceled. I am very busy as well. So that's why I canceled it for tonight. Um, maybe I will add it to like a subscription, Instagram subscriptions next month. Okay. Cause I do also want to like expand on that. The nails. Yes. Okay. Get into it, honey. I'm getting ready for my Venus season. Venus season round the corner. Okay. All right. Um, okay. Let's see. So with it being Taurus season, I just want to also talk about Venus. Like I said, it's with Chiron. Okay. It is with Chiron. So this start of the Venus of Taurus season isn't going to feel as sweet as other Taurus, <laughs> as other Taurus seasons because of this Chiron influence. There could be some wounds and pains again around our like own insecurity, our own values and stability. So there's this energy of needing to know there is enough. Okay. That there is enough for everyone and like leaning out of scarcity and trying to also see what's meant for me is not going to miss me. What's there for me is going to be there for me. Okay. Um, so yeah, Venus and Taurus, if you are a Taurus sun, you're going to probably have Venus and Taurus or Venus and Aries or Venus and Gemini. Um, cause Venus is never too far away from the sun. Okay. So when Venus gets into Taurus, that's going to be the end of April, I believe. Okay. The end of April, I believe. But, child. You have Chiron in Taurus. Ooh. Chiron's in Aries. It's been there for a minute. Okay. It's going to be wrapping up here soon. Venus is going into Taurus on the 29th. So that's exciting for the Tauruses. Okay. That is very exciting for us as well as the Scorpios. The Scorpios are going to be benefiting from that too. All the fixed signs will actually. So that includes Leo as well as Aquarius. Okay. So you're all going to be getting those Venus blessings. And as well, if you have heavy Jupiter placements, when um, Jupiter moves into Gemini on May 25th, it's up. It's up and it's stuck for the Gemini's. It's Gemini's year. Sorry to you. <laughs> Sorry to you, but Gemini is getting to the bag. Okay. Gemini is getting to the bag, which is very, very, very exciting. Um, okay. So let's get into our horoscopes. I've been chit chatting for a minute here. All right. I just be chit chatting like I got all day. Okay. <laughs> Let's start from the top. We always start from the top here. All right. Something about my Taurus routine that I love to just go with the, the, the structure, not the flow, baby, the structure, the structure that we already have. We're starting with Aries. We're going to hit every sign. Check your sun, your moon, and your rising. All right, let's get it. So, and also on YouTube, I'm going to be keeping up with the banner. If you guys see me slip up with the banner, please feel free to remind me. Okay. Remind your girl, please. Gracias. Yo, hyper is definitely giving hyper, hyper, hyper. I said hyper like 15 times in this live and we just been alive for 15 minutes. It's something about it. Okay. It's something about it. The Aries energy is going to remain thick as hell for all of April. So people have been really wanting to fight when Taurus comes, that's going to slow down a little bit. People are going to want to balance, but then Chiron, like the shadows of it is going to come through like, but nah, 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 nah. Now you stepping on my fresh shoes. We're going to fight. That's, <laughs> that's Venus and Aries during Taurus season. Don't step on my shoes. Okay. Something going wrong with my hair. Your hairdresser messes up your hair. Y'all going to fight. <laughs> Let me stop. Okay. Aries, sun, moon, rising. Let's get into what you need to know for this full moon in Scorpio. So Aries, you guys are really feeling this energy hella intensely. This is going to be um, like a money season for Aries. So you could be getting more money, okay? You could be getting more money. You could be launching a business. You could be launching a product, okay? 
You could just be thinking about new streams of income, new streams of investments that can be very powerful for Aries. Aries, you need to like kind of get your finances in order with this. This full moon is also going to have like other people like who like your partner, your child, your parents, your bestie, whoever's really close in your life. OK, this is their life is going to be influencing you at this time. So they could be finding out like maybe they lost their job or maybe they got a promotion or maybe like, you know, they're going to be spending, you know, more time out the house, in the house, whatever it is, their life is going to be directly impacting you and your schedule and your routine. Some of you guys are catching up on old bills that you haven't paid, getting on payment plans, making those phone calls. Okay. But this full moon is going to feel very intense for you guys as it's almost like a purge. It's like a release. It's like you, like, I just see you guys in the banyo in the bath, just like going through this like spiritual cleansing. Maybe you're working with herbs. You're working with like, you know, anything that you get the, bot the botanica, your candles, you know, your salt, your prayers, cleaning off your altar and stuff like that. Putting like, if you work with magical oils, putting those in the bath, putting that in your hair, putting that in your palms. Okay. Um, but ultimately it's going to be a money season for you guys. There could be a feeling as well around Taurus season that, you know, you want to carve out that time for rest. Mercury is in your sign retrograding. And as well, we have that the ruler of your sign with Neptune. So Aries is going to be a little bit more sleepy, a little bit more tired around this time. You could also be seeing how people have been scamming you in a way. They've been lying. They've been trying to pull the wool the a wool over your eyes, something like that. They are shady. Shady boots are going to be revealed to the Aries. Um, whoever is like really does not have your best interest at heart. But you guys are going to, your circle is going to get smaller, but your competence is going to get bigger. OK, your confidence is going to get bigger. You're going to be more confident in who you are and your worth. And the price is going up. OK, yesterday's price is not today's price. OK, we're in your second house season. And Aries is also most likely to be benefiting financially from the Jupiter Uranus conjunction. Aries sun, Aries moon, Aries rising. You guys could also be getting smarter with your money, like what you do with your money and stuff like that. Yeah, you want to you want to have your money making money for you. I'm seeing tattoos. I'm seeing body piercings. Okay, or just changing your hair in some way. You guys want to change the way you look physically. You guys are making decisions around that. Why do you guys have three major arcanas coming up? Okay, so it's a faded time for you. Um, you guys are making a decision here to step into your power, the emperor, to pursue a dream that you've had, and you're gonna be thinking about the actions that you need to take and not just like the benefits. Like we can have like, the reason why more people are not successful is like, you can have all these warm, fuzzy feelings around your success. But then when you actually have to wake up early, when you actually have to make those uncomfortable phone calls, when you actually have to sustain it, that's where things get a little bit tricky. But you guys are coming like, you know what? This is part of my purpose. It's part of my plan. So I, I'm, I'm not going to be defeated, okay, by what other people think about me. I'm not going to be defeated about what I think about me and know that spirit, the divine, my ancestors are going to be bringing me those resources that I need. Okay. The magician card they're going, it's like putting the breadcrumbs are going to be dropping as you put one foot in front of the other. Okay. I feel like the emperor is saying you're making a decision for a new life. You're making a decision to see things in a new way. You're making a decision to tap in with your divine purpose, with your own magic, maybe as well doing like uh, working on something you've never done before, right? Like maybe making your own candles or making your own, um, Olympias, your bat, your uh, cleansing baths. You guys are going to be, I feel like, more hands on around this season. Okay, Aries, do you feel me? Yes, we're going to do all the signs. I look at the chart. I tell you your horoscope from the chart, and then I pull a couple cards for clarity because you know I love the cords. Okay. Now we're getting into Taurus. Taurus, sun, moon, rising. It's your birthday. Happy birthday to all my Tauruses. Yeah. Do you have your birthday fits ready? Do you have your hair style ready? Girl, I'm leading into um that Taurus. You know, Taurus have a, a, a reputation for laziness. It's just because we're ruled by Venus and Venus is for receiving. Venus takes her time. Venus runs on divine time. That's what you heard. Okay. <laughs> so I'm leaning into the Taurus laziness for this. Okay. 
<laughs> Usually I'm like so, so, so active with my birthday. I know, I, I know like, you know, what I'm aware or what I'm gonna look like, you know, how I'm doing my hair right now. I'm like, you know what? It's gonna come together. Okay. It's gonna come together. It's gonna come around. Can't push too much. Okay. Can't push too much. We did just get the eclipse show. A great happening. Venus is it 10 days not ready at all, girl. I feel you. Okay. Venus is not, maybe Venus is not having it this year. Venus is getting slowed down by Chiron. We got other ish to worry about. Okay, Taurus. Um, but yes, Taurus, this is going to be a full moon that is activating your house of relationships. So you guys are going to. You guys could be meeting new people around this time, new re new people who could be part of your soul family, part of your extended family. Okay, this is going to be a great time if you're single, Taurus, to get out and mingle. Okay, um, because of that fact that you are more, you're attracting, you're you're making more connections, you're more relatable at this time. Okay, with the full moon in the seventh house. Now, if you're already in a relationship with somebody, you could also be seeing like how you guys are being called to evolve and grow together and make your unit stronger. You can also see that there's like if you're in a relationship, your partner is needing more time from you or you're spending more time with your partner. You could also be spending more time with your best friend or with anyone that you have very deep emotions for, right? Anyone that you're very intimate with is being highlighted at this time. In a negative aspect, we could say that anyone who's been a, a fugazi, a frenemy, okay, um, an F boy, an F girl in your life is going to be revealed at this time. We're going to be seeing people leaving and people coming in. Um, as well. Now we're also being transformed with the Pluto energy. There could be control issues and control dynamics in the workplace or in your career, or just a feel, an overwhelming feeling of like, I need to transform my life. Okay. I need to transform like everything. Okay. I just want to upgrade. I just want to elevate because Pluto's at the top of your chart and it's like, maybe like it's time. Okay. So Pluto's at the top of your chart being like your energy, your aura, your something is shifting in the Taurus doing like a complete 180. Okay. Then, um, we're also feeling, okay. All of this energy that Mercury retrograde in your 12th house. So Taurus has been needing to lay low. I think this is why we're leaning into that little bit of laziness energy, because we have a lot going on in our house of rest and our house of our house of isolation. And this retrograde is saying slow down. And Taurus is like, we really got to slow down. Okay. Because it's in that 12th house. So we are needing to also recharge our energy, not overextend ourselves, okay? And we can be seeing liars being revealed in your friend groups or ways that maybe you've also lied to yourself about something that you've wanted. You thought you wanted it for a specific reason, but it could have been more egotistical instead of spiritual. And so you're being redirected with this. Taurus is getting a, a physical big blessing in their life with this. And it's going to be very surprising with this Jupiter here in his conjunction. Uranus is doing its big one on Taurus. So let's talk about it. If you have a late degree, like Taurus, Sun, Taurus, Venus, anything like that, right? You have anything at 20 to 28 degrees of Taurus, even 16. I'm going to say 16 to 28 degree, 15 to 28 in the, the, the last half. Fifth, let's say 15 degrees to 30 degrees, okay? Uranus has been there, like, massaging you guys, okay, to be uh, transforming, like, your entire self and breaking of generational curses and freeing yourself, okay? And knowing what you need for that for that freedom to be radically you and to be different and to kind of break out of the mold that you had previously been living in. So if you've been doing that work, you're going to be seeing some tangible blessing coming through in this Taurus season, especially around this full moon this weekend. So watch out for that. You guys, it's really giving, we have to be a thousand percent authentic and real with yourself. Okay. Cause Uranus is there and it's like there to shake this ish up. Okay, but Jupiter is there. It's like, okay, baby, don't worry. It's going to be a blessing. It's going to be big. It's, it's going to be expansive. Taurus, yo, Taurus, 
Yeah, I got a lot of thoughts on your mind. You need to put up a lot of boundaries. We got Queen of Swords, Knight of Swords. Now, this could come through as someone trying to try you or someone pissing you off. I'm seeing almost like someone getting mad like on with customer service, okay? You're getting mad with customer service. You're getting mad with like maybe some some internet platforms or whatever. It's just like feeling like people are not really hearing you and you don't want to wake the tourists up at this point <laughs> because they're they're going to be ready to fight. Okay. They're going to be ready to fight because it's like, you ain't going to lie and play in my face. We got the judgment card. You're also waking up to maybe your divine purpose. We have multiple purposes in our life. So you could be waking up to a new purpose. You know, maybe in the past, your purpose was to be a mother. Now your purpose is to, you know, whatever it is, renovate your kitchen. I don't know. Now your purpose is to, you know, become a writer, whatever it is, you're going to be shifting your purpose, the judgment card. You could also be feeling like people are being too judgmental of you and you're like, screw you. Okay. I come so hard to get here. You're not going to tell me about myself. You need to have boundaries. And we're like getting rid and washing ourselves of like external validation. Okay. External validation, because it's like, I know my purpose. Some of you guys maybe have been too judgmental and critical and harsh of yourself with the judgment card. So you also need to like be easy on yourself and see that you've been doing the best that you can. You've been growing the best that you can. And it's okay. Like just because you haven't been as productive with all this 12th house restful energy doesn't mean there's a lot of things behind the scenes in your dreams, in your meditations, right? Like confirmations and synchronicities about the next stage that you are entering into. Okay. Taurus. Okay. Taurus. I love that for you. Now we're going to get into Gemini, but before we do, I'm going to open the window because I'm getting hot, yo. I'm getting so hot. Y'all know that the uh, seasons are changing. The seasons are changing and it is not giving to be honest. I mean, it's giving, but oh, it's just too hot. I'm someone who gets hot very easily. Do you guys? I get hot easily. So I kind of, I kind of thrive in winter. Okay. I like being comfortable. I like being a little cool. <laughs> When it's hot, it's like it takes over my whole entire body. Okay, Gemini <laughs> takes over my mind. Yo, it's crazy because like we want the warm weather and then when it comes, it's like, ah, it's so hot. What? <laughs> it also probably doesn't help that I love to live in um, sweats, but I do love my shorts. So there, I'm going to be bringing my shorts out. Okay. Thank you for the badge, babe. Speaking blessings over your full moon. Yeah, the transition is hard. The transition is very hard. But once, once we get it, we get it. And I'm going to be blasting that AC. Okay. All right. Um, Gemini, sun, moon, risings. What's good? All the kids are outside. Okay. Gemini, this full moon. Gemini. This full moon is about your health and your wellness. Okay. Gemini is moving into like a, a different health era, right? Maybe you're wanting to eat better. You're wanting to, to detox. You're wanting to drink more water, drink fresh juice, cleanse out your colon, clean your gut, balance your hormones. Okay. Reduce stress. All right. Um, maybe visiting the doctors, getting a new glass, glasses prescription, um, doing your checkups, your routines, great time for that because the full moon is in your house of health and routines. You guys can also be releasing things that were part of your schedule that are no longer serving you. It's like you've been dedicating time or hours and energy into something and you're just like, for what? It's not really doing what it needs to be doing. It's not really giving what it needs to give. Okay. Now, when we enter into um, Taurus uh, season for you guys. Gemini is a time for you guys to kind of chill and get ready for your own season. So you guys could also be feeling a little bit more tired, a little bit more fatigued. If you don't take a break, if you don't give yourself that rest, you can end up feeling sick, you know, food poisoning or like just, you know, some sort of like 
injury maybe that could have been prevented if you would have slowed down and rested and not try to do as much, be as much. You guys have been having this guardian angel um, with Taurus, with Jupiter in Taurus. So you guys are also elevating spiritually as well and maybe connecting deeper with your ancestors, your subconscious, and you know, doing a lot of healing around your mental health and your physical health. Okay. It's really about that for you guys, changing your schedules, changing your routines. You guys are having that Pluto square happening in your house that has to do with educating yourself and, uh, and trips. So you guys can be trying to book trips for the upcoming year, trying to see where, where you want to go. You guys can also be wanting to educate yourself, take a new class. Okay. Or become a teacher, a student, like dive into like exploring different topics. Some of you guys are connecting with people from different cultures too, different cultures, different religions, different spiritualities, visiting, you know, different temples, right? Or like churches, if you haven't been in a while too, you might just have that urge to like go to a Buddhist temple, okay? To go to a retreat, something like that, you know, booking a retreat. That sounds really, really nice. Um, you guys are also feeling like there could be some stress happening around your career or job or just the way that you present yourself. It's giving like this energy of cringe, like you don't want to be cringe. Um, and you're going to be seeing certain illusions fall away around your job and your career, and you're getting more stabilized in it. So it's like, maybe if you only saw the good parts, you're going to be seeing the negative parts of your career. Okay. You guys also can be going through some issues with friends, like feeling like you're outgrowing your friend group or you're outgrowing certain dreams that you've had, and you're like adjusting them to meet this like new energy that you're going to be going into when you have your birthday in a month. Okay, you guys are adapting new perspectives. There could also be someone spying on you. Oh, shit. There could also be someone spying on you. You guys know who I'm talking about, okay? They could be checking your social media. They could be um, watching your moves, okay? It's giving stalker. It's giving, like, um, ex that's still obsessed. It's giving someone you fell out with that's still obsessed with you coming, uh, maybe visiting it, visiting you in your dreams. Someone's watching you from a burner page or something like that. You're watching someone else from a burner page. We got the sun card and the high priestess. That's why I said you know who I'm talking about, the high priestess, okay? The high priestess is like, baby, you already know what I'm talking about. Okay. It's coming in the dreams. It's being revealed. Who's phony? Who's fake? Okay. You're also um, leaning into like pure, innocent joy, not needing ex external things to make you happy. And you could also be making the decision to say yes to something that you've gotten a big download about, but maybe you had been resisting, but you just needed to look at it in a new way. Page of Swords. I'm also seeing this energy for you guys where it's like silence is golden. Like, don't try to say too much. Let people reveal to you their true feelings. Don't try to, you know, feed them lines, okay, about what to say. Okay, Gemini, now we're on Cancer. Cancer, sun, moon, rising. What's good, Cancer? How y'all feeling in the building? It's always when I get up to Cancer that I start remembering. Cancer, okay, drop that six nine, drop the crab, cancer. Something about my brain is 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 in the gutter, is in the trash can, okay? Because why is always when I get to 69 cancer ass, I remember that, okay? Taurus, I don't be like, drop the bulls, Gemini's, I don't be like, drop the twins, nothing. <laughs> it's always cancer. Cancer, y'all freaky deeks. No, cancer is good. Cancer, you guys, um, this full moon is in a Cancerian energy. <laughs> Something is wrong with me. Okay. So you guys are going to be in your element. You're going to be feeling the waters, the emotions, the deepness, the feelings. It could be going up and down, sort of like emotional highs, emotional lows. Okay. Tauruses love the crab. Okay. Um, but we're in Taurus season for cancer. This is a time for you to connect with your, you know, 
with your community, with groups and organizations that align with you. It's time for you to connect deeper with your friends. You could be celebrating your tourist friends' birthdays, okay? You can also be having like a full circle moment where something you've been putting a lot of work, energy, and intention into is finally coming through with some tangible blessings for you. So I feel like this is going to be a very positive a full moon for cancer is happening in that house that has to do with pleasure and joy. So, you know, plan to do something that you want to do. Plan to do something that could be very creative, painting, painting, you know, with your body. Why, why, what is happening? I'm seeing people like put paint on their body and like go on the canvas and like make paint with their body. Yeah, freaks. It's not me. I'm channeling the message. Okay. <laughs> But yeah, you guys, you guys could be going on self dates, romantic dates, having fun with your friends. Okay. Having a good time. This full moon, you're birthing something new into <laughs> your birth. Don't make me laugh. Okay. You're birthing something new. All right. In the world, okay? Something that could be bringing you more pleasure, more joy, more creativity. This could be more uh, friends that you F with. This could be more people that support your dream, more people that you can connect with in a like-minded community too. You guys are feeling this Pluto square in the eighth house of transformation, okay? So you guys are going through like this period of rebirth around maybe your your friends your organizations and circles and as well around like what brings you joy what lights you up from the inside out right <laughs> um with this energy you guys can also be going through a transformation in terms of like you are you know maybe applying for loans, grants, scholarships, getting other people to help support you, fund you, investors. Yeah. Okay. You guys are also having that Mars and Neptune energy in your ninth house. You guys could be feeling very disappointed, like with me, with media, with the way, the way that the world is like just feeling very disillusioned with all the things that you're seeing around yourself. So it's really important to protect yourself in your, in your shell. Okay. Um, cancer. Another thing I feel like, you know, this is going to be a, a, probably a good time for money too, for you guys. Cause Venus is in your 10th house. So you guys can be finding that like you're getting more clients or you're, you're finding money. You're thinking about new ways to make money or as well, if it's not physical money, it's the value that you put in yourself. All right. And presenting yourself and the confidence that you have. Okay. We have you guys being, Ooh, I like this. Okay a wish fulfilled and you guys are in your uh 11th house which is wish which is about your hopes your dreams and your wishes so with the 9 of cups here it's saying a wish is becoming fulfilled in Taurus season after putting in a lot of work and being very tired okay right before you give up something good is happening and um to this feeling of like disappointment and maybe having too many choices and too many options and being like which one is the one for me don't try to pick all of them up okay they're not all meant for you be very selective and seeing like okay what is going to benefit me in five months in in six months in a year in a year and a half not getting blindsided by short term short term moves and short term results Okay. I also feel like this energy of you guys building something or birthing something from the ground up with it being at four degrees, your cancer, all this energy is about the foundation. Okay. That's what I'm seeing for you, cancer. Okay. Do, oh, child, do you feel me? Mercury retrograde kick in my butt. Leos, Leos, drop the lions, Leo, drop your Leo glyph. It's a, it is like a spine. Okay. Leo's probably, you know, known for having some good posture, Leo placements. Oh, Leos. I love me some Leos. All right, Leos, let's get into what you need to know for the full moon. 
this full moon is happening in that Cancerian house. It's happening in that fourth house for you guys. Okay. So your focus is on home and on family, even though you guys have, you know, a lot of energy and Taurus season is going to be a blessing for Leo's. It's going to be a blessing for all the fake signs. Okay. Taurus, Scorpio, Leo, Aquarius, we're all going to be getting blessed with this energy. Why is it a blessing? Because Jupiter is there. Okay. Jupiter is there bringing a blessing to us all. Okay. And the sun is there too. It's going to be very activated. Um, so this is really, really good. Um, okay. So you guys could be finding out certain secrets or information around your family, around your family life. Your roommate reveals like, yeah, I know that you ate my lunch. Okay. No. Um, but yes, yeah, something like this. Are you just wanting to spend more time around this full moon, you know, redecorating, reorganizing your home and stuff like that? Maybe some of you guys have been looking for a new home. You have found it. OK. Or you're changing like you're getting new visions around your home and what you want to do with it. Tour season is highlighting your career and your like and magnetizing you. So if you've been wanting to do something, this is a great season to actually do it. Okay. Especially if you're an entrepreneur launching your own products, offering services, word of mouth, going into, into the real world and like connecting with people one-on-one, -on -one. you guys are more magnetic in this season in Taurus season. Okay. You guys could also be getting some money flowing to you through your job. Okay. I'm done with you. Instagram comments got me weak. Okay. Instagram comments got me weak. That's why I can't read the comments. Okay. I got to say focus. Oh God. Okay. But yeah, so you guys are also feeling this Pluto square in your house of relationships, your seventh house. So if you are like, let's say, a, 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 what is it called? If you are, um, a Leo rising. Okay. A Leo rising and Aquarius rising. You guys can be feeling like you're, um, there's a shift happening and like the people that you resonate with and the people that you no longer resonate with. Okay. I feel like this could be transforming your intimate partnerships, your intimate one-on-one -on -one relationships too, could be, um, something that is elevating. You could be seeing how there are some manipulation tactics as well, or some power dynamics that need to be leveled out. And it's like, you know, you're a Leo, so you're going to be <clears throat> very prideful. And so, um, not, going into like self-sacrificing mode, people pleasing mode. Okay. Um, it's just not going to be benefiting you here. Pluto was going to be in your seventh house for a long time. So it's something that's going to develop, but this square is activated. This is, I want to say this is the first, maybe the first full moon in Scorpio with Pluto and Aquarius, but I'd have to double check that. But I believe so. I believe so. Okay, Leo. Um, so this, if it is the first, then it's starting out this cycle that you're going to be feeling for the next couple, next couple decades. Okay. So it's actually a blessing because you don't want to be entertaining relationships that are depleting you, that are draining you, that are toxic as, okay. Like any toxicity you've, you've, um, harbored or that you have helped co-create in your relationships are going to be highlighted and coming to the surface. Okay. This full moon could also be sparking certain things in your mind about the past and nostalgia and the things that you want to transform and change around your own psychology, around the way that you really think about, um, certain topics and situations. You guys have the ACE of wands and the strength card. Now the strength card is Leo in the tarot. So this is you guys, you guys, are, you know, maybe as well feeling a little bit triggered. Okay. Around this, around this full moon, feeling triggered and seeing because there's some spiritual or creative prompting that you're getting from the divine, that if you go with your passion and you go with your gut and you go with what your dreams are trying to tell you, you're going to be reaching new heights of abundance and stability, 10 of pentacles. You're also going to be deeply connecting with your ancestors and elders. You could be having dreams about them in as well around this full moon in 
in whatever it is, Scorpio. And as well, I feel like you guys are breaking these generational curses as well. This is like a highlight that you're a highlighted theme. And you guys are seeing how you are here to, you know, make your bloodline more royal and more prideful. OK, by the actions and the steps that you take. Some of you guys are just going to also be feeling very sensual, sexual, and creative. With that ace of wands. Now we are in Virgo. We are on Virgo. Virgo, what's good? Virgo, sun, moon, rising. Drop yo Virgo sign in the comments. Okay. Drop the woman. Drop the harvest. Okay. Virgo, we out here. Just felt like I did like some chest work right there. Just because earlier I did focus on arms and back. Summer is coming. Okay. Stay ready so you don't have to get ready. Where are we going this summer? Where are we going? I need to go somewhere. Okay. All right. So, Tor, I mean, wow, what am I talking about? Virgo, Taurus season is going to actually be blessing your uh, house that has to do with adventure and travel and trip. Where are we going? That was a channeled message, Virgo. Where are we going? You guys are wanting to go somewhere. You're planning your trips. You're planning your bikinis, your fun in the sun, your all-inclusive results. Okay. <laughs> Whatever it is, maybe you've been wanting to travel, go somewhere for a long time. You're planning that now um, because the sun is in your ninth house of travel. Some of you guys here are maybe, um, I feel like you're winning something. Okay. You guys could be winning something or feeling like a winner. This full moon is in your house that has to do with expressing yourself. So you're going to be having a lot of different conversations. People are going to want to hear your point of view, hear what you got to say. This is a good time for marketing as well. For marketing, if you own your own business, like getting your word, word of mouth, doing in-person things and stuff like that. Okay. We're having this Pluto square happening in your sixth house. So you're really focusing on detoxing. You're focusing on detoxing all the stressful areas of your life so that you can, you know, live maybe less inflamed, right? You don't want to be super inflamed. You guys are maybe going to a holistic doctor, holistic medicine, Chinese medicine, all those things. I also feel like, you know, with Pluto here, you're transforming your relationship to stress. You might not let things get you like they could have gotten to you last year as you are called to like elevate and upgrade that with Pluto there. Um, another thing for you guys is that um, you guys are transforming your relationship with money, this energy of like, I will have enough, even if I have to pay a lot, even if there's a lot going out just as much as, or more, just as much and more is going to be coming back, like affirming your relationship with money as well is going to be very intense. And I feel like with Virgos, you guys are going to also see like how you need to have certain boundaries in your relationships where people have maybe um, overstepped their boundaries and they have tried to push you into uncomfortable situations and any illusions around partners can also be fading partners as in besties or your romantic partners and stuff like that. That's going to be illuminated too. Um, any, any lies to any deception around that can be, uh, coming up or feeling a little bit, maybe disappointed as well with someone's actions and how it, it actually impacts you a lot. It's kind of a lot Virgo. And it's, it's all because you have a lot going on in your seventh house. You have a lot going on in your eighth house. And so, you know, the seventh house is your house of relationships and the eighth house is hidden. It's about rebirth. It's about transformation, but also having like really deep feelings and stuff. So Virgos, reach out to your Virgos. Um, we got the full card happening here. So you guys are entering into a new chapter, a new era. Okay. You're getting, oh, a download about a decision that you have to make to do something you've never done before. And you could be feeling foolish. You could be feeling imposter syndrome. You could be feeling like, baby, I'm not the one. I can't do it. But guess what? You were chosen to do it. Okay. The lover's card going into a new phase in your relationship. Some of you guys meeting new people. Okay. Some people um, coming back together after a reconciliation um, as well. 
or people maturing and growing together. We have 10 of cups. This is beautiful. Whatever decision that you're making is going to actually be very positive for you, your lineage, your bloodline, the people, you know, um, that you surround yourself with 10 of cups is like ultimate happiness based off a decision that you make to do something that you never done, do something for the first time, even if you feel foolish, even if you don't have proof in front of you right now, how that's going to play out. Okay, Virgo, that was you, baby. Now we getting to Libra. Libra, sun, moon, rising, what's good? Libra, we have to talk, okay? Libra, it's kind of crazy, okay? It's kind of crazy the way astrology is. This full moon is happening in your house of money, all right? So that is going to be very positive for you. The sun is in your eighth house, though, so you're going through um, some sort of rebirth in Taurus season. But we have this energy where it's like, you know your worth, you know your values. Venus is in your house of relationships, so you can be um, making a commitment in a relationship to someone new, getting engaged, okay? Like anything that has to do with love and Libra, okay? With Venus being opposite your um, rising, opposite your sign, right? Because it is in Aries. So there's something like that happening here. Also, some of you guys can just be making new female friends, making new friends that you want to do the work with, that you want to heal with, that you want to grow with, that you want to be vulnerable with and have really deep conversations. And also you guys are like having conversations where you're reminiscing a lot. Okay. You could be reminiscing a lot about different phases in your relationships and your friendships, finding pictures as well of yourself with, with people years ago, five years ago, two years ago. Yes. Libra drop your sign, drop that horizon. Libras drop the scales. Libra, how we feel, how we feeling Libra. Yes, yeah, sacred love, Venus and Aries. Okay, Venus is an Aries. But it's also with Chiron. So it's like sometimes we need to heal. We need to heal ourselves. We need to transmute our trauma by ourselves sometimes so that we're not putting this on other people in our relationships. Or even if you do or you already have done that, you are maturing in some way. You guys are getting this Pluto square in your house of joy. So you guys are transforming the things that make you happy. So it's like, I feel like after eclipse season, your taste buds have changed. The things that maybe you used to really like, you used to really vibe with, they are no longer things that you like. Maybe you're donating bags and bags of clothes. You're donating bags of furniture that you know. <laughs> bags of furniture is crazy. Bags of decorations, um, getting rid of furniture, you know, listing it, selling it so you can make more space. Some of you guys too can be, um, transforming your relationship with children. Okay. Maybe you guys are going to be more fertile. You're going to be having children or your relationship with children in general is going to transform. This could even be for like a teacher with no kids. Okay. The way that you're relating with children is developing. Okay. But I feel like with this full moon and your 12th house, your values, like the things that you never, that you used to value, that you no longer resonate with, you no longer have space for it. But again, also good for your money. And I feel like you guys are going through a spiritual, excuse me, rebirth and blessing with Jupiter and Uranus in your eighth house. Some of you guys can be getting money from other people, right? Sponsorships. You guys are getting those loans, those grants, something like that. Someone else's money or resources or finances, they want to invest in you. And if you're feeling like, no, babe, that's not me. Have you even applied? Have you even asked? Okay. Have you even researched? Okay. This is a good time for that. Magician, y'all can make magic. Y'all can get miracles. Okay, the magician card is also one. This is a new adventure. Okay, seeing that you already have the resources and if you don't have them, open your mouth, ask, and you shall receive. All right, we have the page of cups reversed. And so some of you guys are reestablishing maybe your spiritual routine, your meditations, your altars. Some of you guys could also be dealing with people who are just so immature and they don't get it and you don't have to explain it to them. 
period. You do not have to explain it to them if they don't understand your values, if they don't understand your worth. This is a sign of immaturity. Maybe some of you guys, this is you. Look in the mirror. Have you kind of been um, avoidant of certain things that you need to face one-on-one? -on -one? We have the Wheel of Fortune here. So I feel like with um, the full moon happening in your money house. You guys could just be getting money. Okay. You could be getting that grant. You could be getting that scholarship. Okay. You could be getting a new job. All right. With this will of fortune, but this is giving changes. Okay. Definitely changes that are going to be fortune that are going to be blessed, but you cannot be so stuck and rigid on the way that it comes through. So opening up the way, the ways in which avenues of blessings can come to you. That is so funny. That's because you were born on a full moon. Okay. Um, if you are the Libra sun, Aries moon. Okay. Beautiful. Um, so my computer is really like acting like so crazy. Like, please. Okay. Scorpio, drop your stinger. Scorpio, where are you at? Are you here? Are you in the building? We're talking about you, Scorpio. Watch all the Scorpios intuitively. Just like find the live and click on the live. I told you that I'm having an issue. Like when people go live, I don't see it anymore on my like stories. So let me know if you saw this live on your stories or if you just got a notification that I was going live. Let me know. I'm going to try to see. But yeah, Scorpio, we're talking about you now. It's a full moon in Scorpio. So you know that is going to be hella impacting you. Okay. Hella impacting you. You know, you guys are, you guys are going to be feeling this like intense pull here because of the, you saw this live on your stories. You saw it on your stories. Why is my Instagram like this? Well, that's good. That's good. I guess I'm the only one. So I appreciate knowing that. I don't know why this is happening to me, but it is happening to me. I don't get, I don't see people go alive anymore. Um, but I think it'll, I think it's just Mercury retrograde. I think it'll sort itself out. Um, but yes, yeah, Scorpio. So with the moon in your sign, you're going to be directly impacted. I feel like you're going to be having a lot of realizations, a lot of downloads here. It's happening in your first house. It's happening in your environment. If you're not feeling emotional, it's someone else around you feeling emotional and you having to like maybe hold space or maybe you're getting triggered and you need to take space for yourself, especially if you feel like you guys are not equally yoked and you're also always pouring into someone else. Um, you guys are getting that transformation, that Pluto square happening in your home. So you guys could be transforming your home. This could be renovating, redecorating. You guys can also be seeing how there's some power dynamics at play with your roommates or with your family or whoever you live with as well. There could be some transformation happening in your family, hearing of someone getting pregnant. Okay. Hearing about, you know, someone in your life like changing. Maybe they got fired. Maybe they got a new job, something like that. The people around you that you're related to, their life is changing and it's going to be impacting you in some way. The sun being in the seventh house is highlighting relationships for you guys. Okay. So Scorpio, this is a good time for you guys, even though you might not want to, to meet new people. Okay. This could be a good time for you guys to meet new people, to hang around those, the ones that you love. There is a blessing coming through with the individuals that you're meeting because Jupiter and yours in your seventh house. You guys could also be taking maybe your relationships to the next level. I feel like some of you guys are seeing who really rocks with you and who just pretends to rock with you and you're not going to be giving them your energy any more. Okay. Cause when you're seventh house season, it's like who needs to be in your life is going to be revealed and who doesn't need to, you're also going to be seeing that. Okay. You're also going to be seeing that you guys can also with the mercury retrograding in your sixth house be uh, changing up your schedule, slowing down, making more space for rest, maybe going to bed earlier or something like that. Um, for your own health, you guys are really focusing on your health, not only because you want to look good, but you want to feel good on the inside too. That's another thing happening with you guys with this like six house activation. Um, 
some of you guys could be maybe going through physical therapy or trying to be more flexible and stretch and like create more space in your body um, for flexibility because, you know, you are a fixed rigid sign and you guys are wanting to like get flexible in your physical body. I also feel like you guys are undergoing some like psychological upgrades, some psychological changes here. Okay. With Pluto here, um, seeing how maybe you have been manipulative, someone else has been manipulative and it's not just to say, okay, this person is bad, but it's like, okay, this person maybe is delusional. Maybe I was a little delusional. How can I bring better energy into my partnerships, into my relationships? I, yo, I was seeing it when I was shuffling and it came out. You guys got the three of swords. So you guys, I, I tried to stay away from saying, yeah, I'm going to be feeling emotional because obviously I don't want to scare me but you guys are going to be feeling emotional. You guys are, could also be feeling triggered. Okay. You could be feeling a little bit defensive here as well. Okay. I feel like you're ultimately being pushed with the page of wands to start a new journey, to start a new chapter, to know that what is meant for you isn't going to miss you. You're not going to have to, um, manipulate. You're not going to have to play power games and power dynamics with this. Okay. Um, some of you guys, some people could want to fight you or you're going to want to fight other people, but I feel like you need to tame your temper, tame your temper because you can kind of make a situation worse because of the way that you're seeing it. Okay. The way that you're seeing it. This is giving heartbreak or something weighing heavy on your heart. So I feel like Scorpio, you need to take more space for yourself, okay? And also surrounding, surround yourself with people that you feel like you don't have to like prove yourself against. And I also feel this energy of competition. So if you feel like in an in a area of your life you're in competition, the more that you're comparing yourself, the more you're going to feel like you're losing, okay? You have to get your head in the game. It's almost like me versus me type of situation, okay? Me versus me. Don't compare yourself. Okay. Now we are on Sagittarius. Sagittarius, drop your arrow, drop your bow and arrow. Sagittarius. What's good? What's good? Sagittarius, y'all need to sit your ass down somewhere. <laughs> Y'all need to sit your ass down somewhere. Okay, you guys are going to be feeling a little bit more tired. You're in the full moon, you know, activates everyone, gives people so much energy, and they got all the energy in the world. Y'all going to be feeling a little bit more tired because in your 12th house. I also feel like you guys are focusing on your own mental health. This could be seeking therapy or keeping it real with yourself, keeping it real with your best friends, getting some real honest feedback from other people. Okay. Thank you for the badge again. My love speaking blessings over Jew, honey, for this full moon eclipse. I mean, oh, it's not an eclipse anymore, but Mercury is still retrograding. Okay. Mercury is still retrograding. Also, you guys, I'm having a little bit of an epiphany right now because I do indeed believe that this is the first full moon in Scorpio that is not an eclipse in the past two years. Okay, the last time we had a full moon in Scorpio, it was an eclipse. I'm thousand percent sure about that. This is, I'm thousand percent sure because the last year was a full moon in Scorpio, a couple of days before my birthday. So this is the first one that's not a lunar eclipse. That's good. That's really good. Okay, Scorpio, you've already been doing the work. So we're going to be seeing a new storyline here. Now, when we think about full moons, we don't want to think about them in isolation as well. We can think back to like October, all right, around your birthday too, with that energy. Okay. Or, you know, if you're whatever, Sagittarius, around six months ago, something as well occurring that is coming to a culmination now. But Sagittarius, you guys here are going to be feeling um, more focused on your mental health and like doing things that's like bringing you more peace, more rest, more like maybe isolation as well. And you guys are in your sixth house season. So this season for you guys is really all about reorganizing your schedule. Okay. So you guys can be taking certain things off your schedule, putting some things on your schedule, getting organized with your time, your time management, visiting the doctors, visiting the dentist, visiting the therapist. Okay. Taking care of your physical body. You guys can feel a little bit more stressed during this season. You could be putting a lot of 
pressure on yourself. And so that's why it's really important to slow down and not say yes to everything. Um, but ultimately, there's still a lot of energy in Aries in your house of pleasure and joy. So lean into, into that pleasure, into um, women. I'm seeing like groups of women doing healing work. Like maybe it's a retreat, maybe it's a meetup. Okay. But it's like women healing together in person or maybe even on online communities. You guys are pursuing your dreams, right? And this could be a dream that you've had for a long time. And you're finally putting yourself out there in new and creative ways. All right. Because of this Venus and all this energy here in your fifth house. I also feel like you guys are seeing this Pluto square in your third house. So you guys are going through this throat chakra activation. It's like, you know, when something is worth saying and when something is better left unsaid. Okay. Um, and some of you guys are like trans, like you guys are going to be transforming family dynamics. Okay. Relationships with your siblings or your cousins can also be changing. And as well, um, your neighborhood. Okay. So maybe you're moving or you're just noticing that your neighborhood is changing a lot. There's going through a lot of like new buildings or, you know, new, new issues going down. It just got mad cloudy outside. Yo, someone tell me he's about to, um, rain again. It probably is. You know what? It probably is. That's good though. That's good for the plants. Okay. Can't hate on the plants and the trees. That's what they need. Okay. Ooh. Okay. Sag. I see this ace of wands coming for you guys. I just feel like this is, could be very creative, sensual energy happening here. Okay. You guys will be feeling more turned on. All right. I also feel like you guys are being turned on by your passions. Okay. By your passions, by your purpose. And you're seeing ways in which maybe you've held yourself back, self-harm, self-sabotage with anxiety and apathy and hold it like literally holding yourself back because of your mind and the way you think about a situation. But an idea that you've planted is starting to bloom and you're starting to see good things coming from it. And it's like, um, basically it's positive reinforcement to keep on going with it. Okay. Some of you guys are entering into maybe an, um, season of entrepreneurship. Okay. Or leadership with this King of swords. Thank you for the badge bow. Speaking of blessings over you. <laughs> The heat and the rain. I know we're talking about weather a lot. Okay. But yeah, so King of Swords, you guys, this is also saying that transformation, your throat chakra. If you want something, say it. Don't let that moment go by. And then you you live with the regret of like, what if I would have put myself out there? What kind of opportunity, what kind of opportunities could open up for me? Okay. Um, something magical. Okay, coming through here. I love that for you. I love it for you. I'll be posting this reading after the live with timestamps. You can always come back uh, and everything like that. Also, you could go on YouTube. If you miss something, you could always go on YouTube and just take that little dot and rewind. Okay. Rewind to your sign. Um, And check your sun, your moon, and your rising. Capricorn. What's good, Capricorn? So... Drop your goats, Capricorn. Drop your goats. Drop your glyph. All right. Thank you for the badge boost. Begin blessings over you. Capricorn, what's really good with you, baby? We are in your fourth house. No, your fifth house season. And this full moon is in your 11th house. So I feel like you guys are having a full circle moment. Like it's giving like something that you have really, really wanted coming to fruition. Okay. Full moons, like we've been saying, it's a culmination, something, something, building, building, building. And finally we, it happens, right? This is happening in your house of um, hopes and dreams and wishes. So it's like, I feel like a wish coming true, a wish, excuse me, being granted, with you being in your fifth house season, Capricorn, it's going to be a good season for you. You guys are going to feel lighter. You guys are going to love this earth energy that we're in with you guys being earth signs. Okay. Um, I also feel like you guys are going to have an adventure that can be bringing you lots of blessings. Okay. That Jupiter Uranus in your fifth house, this could be a date with a soulmate, a date with a friend. That's a soulmate, like, a you know, those soulmates that are your friends. Okay. That kind of energy is connecting 
is 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 blessing you and connecting with you. I also see that this transformation is happening in your house of money. So the ways that you make money, maybe you're trying to make money with more ease, okay, and less force. The ways that you make money is changing. The ways that you spend money, the ways that you invest your time, and you're transforming and elevating your values with Pluto making the square in your second house, okay? But ultimately, Taurus season is going to be feeling, like again, like a breath of fresh air air for you guys. You guys are going to be birthing something. So there's a new fresh chapter that you're giving birth to that's going to be bringing you lots of pleasure, lots of joy. It can be related to your home moving. It can be related to your family blessings happening from your family. It can also be related with you guys freeing yourself from like mental uh, jail or like a mental prison you put yourself in and you're finally seeing like, damn, it, I, I could have been part of the problem the whole time. Okay. I could have been part of the problem the whole time. Uh, this just in, this is not having to anything to do with Capricorns. It has to do with the actual full moon. There could be, there could be news that we're getting around water, water. Okay. So this can be like, anything crazy. All right. About boats. Okay. Boats, water, um, tsunamis, right. Um, cruise ships, something coming up. I, I, I feel like this. Okay. Um, around this full moon, be careful of the water essentially. Okay. That just came through. All right. Um, but yes, Capricorn ultimately for you, <laughs> is going to be positive, is going to be a blessing for you, You're going to be um, birthing something, water, no, I was not, not saying that, we already are experiencing things like that, but I feel like this is more like global, okay? It's not, it's not, it, you know what, there, we're good, we could be seeing that the water shortage is more like at the end of this year. Okay. The end of this year is more of that. Um, water supplies tainted, right. Poison, stuff like that. Um, but Mars is that planet of like war aggression and bad, bad things happening here. And it's with Neptune. Okay. In Pisces, a water sign. So yeah, <clears throat> something with the water listen. Okay. I'm just reading the charts flooding in Dubai. Oh my God. Oh my God. A lot of you guys are saying something about Dubai. Oh, sh I did see that. I did see that. I follow some people in Dubai and I saw the flooding. Right. And then we had that thing with the boat in Boston and like something like that, essentially. Um, it could be cars, you know, as well with that Mars representing cars. Okay. But let's focus. Okay. On the tarot cards, on the Capricorns, the chariots, five of swords, the page of cups. Okay. So I feel like you guys are multitasking a lot. You guys are going to be very, very busy here and cleaning off your altar, making things more beautiful, being more creative. Okay. And then the five of swords. Okay. Some regrets. All right around things that you said, someone can say something to you that can be very hurtful. And that is, that can be very triggering. Okay. For you and flood you with emotions or you say something. So like, don't let anyone kind of get you out of pocket. Okay. Don't let anyone kind of like, um, take you out of your own like element and stuff like that. But you guys are ultimately going to be very busy multitasking. And this is a good time for you guys to also use social media, use the internet for your advantage, do your research online and stuff like that. Okay. Aquarius. Aquarius. We are on your sign, honey. Get in here. Drop your sign. Drop the water bearer. Drop those waves, honey. Drop the aliens in the live chat, in the comment section, if you're watching the replay. Yo, yo. Okay, Aquarius, you are a fixed sign. So we are in a fixed season. It's going to be beautiful for you guys. You know, it's going to be happening more low key than other signs. You guys might be called to like stay home more. Okay. 
with this fourth house energy, okay, you guys could just have less energy. I feel like you guys could be, you know, having some really good food, getting some real good recipes, all right? Recipes, receipts. This full moon can be bringing you to a culmination in your career. So this could be like a promotion or just feeling like with greater, greater clarity around the impact that you want to have in the world in general, okay? Um, you guys could be feeling as well like you wanting you're needing a shift in your life. Like just, you want to change things up in your job. You want to change things up in your career or something like that, or the energy that you bring, you're feeling like they're, you're birthing something new, but that's why you need to kind of recharge and restore your energy. Pluto is in your first house. So that Pluto square is directly impacting you. You guys are definitely going to be feeling this full moon. And with the Pluto in your first house, you're like, Everything about you is transforming, is upgrading. You're not going to be able to even recognize yourself in 20 years. It's going to be this energy of allow me to reintroduce myself, okay? Aquarius, you guys are going through a very deep process here with Pluto and this full moon squaring it off. Something tangible in your life is going to happen around maybe your personal environment, around the energy that you bring into a room, into your family, into your home. Something is shifting. And maybe if you've been looking for a new home, this could be a good time as well to get back on that search. Okay. If you've been looking for a new space as well, like if you have your own business, that could be positive too. I just feel like Aquarius is like really evolving a lot. Okay. Pluto is an Aquarius. You guys are going through a, a death rebirth sort of situation. Okay. Um, another thing that I'm seeing here is that the, you guys are fertile. Okay. That's just came through. You guys are fertile. Um, so be very careful with that. Um, <laughs> all right. And, uh, some Aquarius can also be feeling like there's something happening with the money. Like the money is tight. The money is tight. So you're getting creative downloads around how to, you know, diversify your portfolio. Okay. About how to make money, maybe in your sleep, something like this. It's like, you're getting more financially savvy as well. Maybe you're opening up different accounts, different, you know, different things to like kind of spread things out, working on your credit, your credit score, all those things really positive for you guys. Um, but yeah, I feel like you guys have been so busy in airy season that it's okay to kind of slow down a lot in Taurus season because with this Pluto square, you're going to be hit with a lot. Emotional transformation. I feel like emotional maturity coming to new heights. There's been a lot of Aquarius slander on Twitter during airy season. Okay. A lot of people talking about y'all. I think that's going to calm down in Taurus season. We got the Ace of Pentacles, money, okay? The star card, that's your card, Aquarius, okay? You're investing money in your healing. You're investing money in your beauty. You're investing money maybe in as well, like, um, spirituality into healing, into, uh, learning more about using your intuition. Okay. You're focusing on your physical body and upgrading your physical, like, uh, reality, your physical environment. Okay. With this ACE of Pentacles health, right? Maybe you're changing up your diet and the way that you eat. Okay. You're healing your guts. Okay. Yes. Boo. What is good? And the high priestess, your intuition is coming through around certain transformations you're being called to make, okay? And investments you're being called to make as well. Okay, Aquarius. Now we're on Pisces. Pi Pisces, what is good? Okay, drop the fish. Drop the fish. Looking back, because I asked you guys if you got this live through stories, someone said on YouTube that you don't see it in the story. So it's like some people are seeing lives in their stories and some people aren't. There is a glitch happening. Not even, even a little bit surprised because of that Mercury retrograde. I don't like that. 
All right. But let's get into Pisces, honey. You've been live for almost an hour and a half. One, two, three. I love that number. It is about the steps and sequences that we need to take. Okay. So Pisces, sun, moon, rising. Are you here? Drop your fishies. Pisces, what's good? What's good? Pisces, sun, moon, rising. I want to tell you right now, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. You're going to get through it. Blame it on Saturn. Okay. Saturn is in Pisces right now. And it is, it is putting pressure on you to make more beauty. Okay. That diamond energy. All right. There's something in your life that you're needing to cut out. Some of you guys, it's self doubt. Okay. Some of you guys, it's self doubt. Uh, some of you guys, it's like lying to yourself about something like that has been giving you more anxiety than you even need. With us being in Taurus season, we're in your third house. So Pisces, your schedule is about to get a little bit more crazy. You guys probably have a lot to do in Taurus season for these next four weeks. You've already like said that you're going to do this, be here and go everywhere. Okay. So you're going to be feeling a little bit busy, but this Pluto square is happening in your 12th house of rest. So you're transforming your relationship with rest. You're transforming your relationship with people pleasing. Okay. This full moon is in your ninth house. So this is, um, you know, maybe you guys are trying to study or learn something. You're going to YouTube university. You're, you're picking up hacks on TikTok. You are planning out certain trips that you want to have throughout the year. You're craving food from other cultures. Okay. All of that happening for this full moon. But ultimately with this being in your third house season, you guys are going to have very important conversations that can open up to new blessings. So don't be afraid to say what's on your mind. Okay. Get it off your chest, Pisces. Speak on it and more blessings will come from it, okay? You have had a lot of energy in your second house, okay? You could have been paying off things that were owed to you, paying bills, okay? All that money that you spent, affirm that it's coming back times 10, okay? Tenfold, baby, and it should, all right? But with Mercury retrograde in the second house, this can slow down your money. Okay. This can slow down your money. This can slow down your income. So at this point, you're seeing also how not only is it important for you to save your energy, but some of you guys, it's important for you to also save your money. Okay. Prepare for seasons where there could be a dip in that. Some of you guys could be also wanting to change the way that you work or where you work um, with this retrograde happening in that second house. Um, I also feel like a blessing could be coming through a sibling or a family member, someone in your community that Jupiter Uranus is blessing. And as well with Saturn in Pisces, you guys are maturing, especially if you are going through your Saturn return. You have Saturn in Pisces natally. Okay. That's also going to be impacting you with, um, Mars in Pisces. You guys have, you guys are needing to get healthy, um, ways that you express your like healthy outlets. Okay. Healthy outlets to express your anger. Okay. And to calm any impulsivity, all right, with Mars there, you guys could be feeling a little bit more hot headed than usual. And it's like, you don't even have all the facts. So don't take that personally. Also be careful with water and boats, boats. Okay. <laughs> Why is boats coming and cars? Okay. I'm feeling like road rage. I said boats and look what we got the six of swords they're on a boat. Okay. And there's a lot of worries here. This is ultimately um, so showing us that like you guys are moving into a different chapter, into a transformation, but you're more worried about like how it's going to play out. And you have to kind of be like knowing it's going to work out. Okay. You guys have six, six. Okay. This is really about community. And also some of you guys, if you need something, opening up that throat chakra and asking for it, closed mouths don't get fed. Some of you guys can be a blessing. Okay. So then giving back to your community, if you can give back. And then we have the three of swords in reverse. So you guys are healing from your heart. Okay. You're healing you're healing something that had hurt you maybe by looking at it in a more mature way or seeing what that it had to happen for a specific reason. Okay. Um, yeah. Surf lessons. That sounds good. That sounds fun. 
But yes, closed mouths don't get fed, honey. Okay, this is opportunities coming to you, but you have to ask for them and don't be worried about it. Don't talk yourself out of it. Don't be the reason and the source of your own disappointment. Okay, Pisces. So we did it. We went through all of the horoscopes, you guys. If you've been here, um, please like the video. Please subscribe to my channel. Okay, come back, comment, share the video with a friend. Make sure you tap in because on the full moon in Scorpio, we're having our sensual healing attunement. It's a private YouTube stream, distance Reiki session, sound, bath, magical altar. All right. You can secure spot on my site, big empress energy, LLC.com. We also have our abundance burn happening Friday the 19th at 6 30 p.m eastern standard time there's no live so there's no replay if you want to get in you have to secure a spot by 6 30 no later than that okay because i have to read everyone's petition that night all right um so yeah if you want to work with me one-on-one -on -one, book a reading you can do that I do astrology readings tarot readings psychic readings everything you need to know is on my site thank you for the badge boo speaking blessings over you and everyone who likes the video, okay, everyone who shares the videos, we can blessings, 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 blessings. Let's work this full moon for our advantage, for rebirth, for transformation, okay, and for healing um, intimacy issues as well, getting close with people and seeing what secrets and things pop up, okay? Pay close attention to what gets revealed. It's going to be an intense one, you guys. I hope that this reading resonated with you comment. Let me know where you're watching from, how it resonated, all those beautiful things. We will talk soon. Bye. Bye, bye, bye.